I'm so with you on that. <laughs> uh-huh. I really am. Yes. You, you feel a draft in here? Oh, oh, the Rizzo Show starts right now. Woo! MGM Northfield Park presents The Rizzo Show. And now, your host, Tony Rizzo, with co-host Mike Polk, Jr. Oh, yes. F- f- look, listen, my allergies are back. It's nice. Tis the season. Was it 39 degrees when we woke up this morning? Yeah, it's supposed to be 82 right. later We're on. We're from Cleveland. Yep. Mike, hand me my lunch pail. Folks, are we having fun? Are we? There? I'm sorry. I didn't oh, no, leave that's you fine. There we go. Uh, that would have been. Are we having fun? Did you enjoy the draft? I did. I, it was weird. Wasn't it, it was very weird. Now you were uh, at, at the MGM. MGM. Out there. What a great time! I want to thank everybody that came out for our draft party at the new fabulous MGM. Even though we didn't have a pick on Thursday, we had fun. <laughs> that's how excited we are about this football <laughs> team. We, uh, you had a, a room full of people who came to you watch the Browns draft. No one. <laughs> and there was none of that sad feeling on the way out or anything like that because no. we were just like, I don't know, that quarterback's five. Seven, you know, so it's that's exciting. Technically, we drafted Odell Beckham Jr. Yes, and, that's how and I look that, at it. Will you take him? Take that put, take no. that into account for our draft grades. National media. Mike's going to be giving his. Don't go anywhere, folks. The Browns are greedy for wins this Get year. It? Get it? Uh, all the puns for greedy. <laughs> uh-uh. How about the red wine kit? Yeah. Um, red, red wine. We, we drafted a kid. His last name is Red Wine. And that song probably came out 20 years before right. he um, uh, actually But was when born. the Browns finally did have a pick, uh, Michael, they went with Greedy Williams, who's a cornerback from LSU. You know, I do these crazy mock drafts mm-hmm. on my show, uh, like, yeah. for months. And this year it was weird because we didn't have a pick, but we still did him anyway. Yeah. He was kind of a guy everybody thought would go in the first round. Uh, he wound up going in the second round. The Browns traded up for him. He's a playmaker. He's a big guy. So here's the deal. Denzel's a little smaller guy. Right. He's got the smaller wide receivers. This kid at 6'2 will cover the bigger wide receivers. Right. And won't that be fun? I mean, how many years did we watch Joe Hayden desperately try to cover A.J. Green, who yeah. was, uh, you know, much bigger than him? So now you got a pair of, uh, of, you got a pair of cornerbacks for your future, hopefully. Yeah, and um, the knock on him anyway was that uh, he's not a great tackler, but let's face it, he's brought in here to cover receivers, right. and that's what he will do. Here is what uh, General Manager John Dorsey had to say about the tackle. He's playing in the, in the, the hardest um, conferences there are in college football. I think he holds up really well. I mean, I have no problem with his tackling. He'll get you down. Corners are paid to cover, and then and tackling aspect, just get the guy down. Just get the guy down. That's what they say in Vegas. Just yeah. get the guy down. Yeah. That's all you got to do. Michael, you trust Doris, right? I have to right now. What, he hasn't really done anything to prove otherwise, and until he does, we got to accept this. You hear about these weird uh, draft grades and stuff like that. As you said, how does anybody know how these guys are going to turn out? You don't, you know? And he has a pretty good track record. Look at where he found talent last year. Yeah, Michael, I, I am done giving grades and doing. I, I mean, we've been through the highs and the yeah. lows, the Johnny Manziel Mostly saga. the lows. We, mostly the lows. Mostly the lows. I'm done giving grades. I'll say this. Browns went and got Kareem Hunt and Odell Beckham Jr. on offense. So I figured this draft would be mostly defense. Yes. It is. They picked the tackle late, but how about they also found me my kicker. Michael, yeah. Michael Greg Joseph will have competition. Um, this kid played for Baker's team. Austin Uncle Siebert. Homer. Austin Siebert. He went 63 of 79 on his career field goals. He set a scoring record in the NCAA last year. But it's only the second time Dorsey has drafted a kicker. But I think it speaks volumes to they were behind Greg Joseph so far in the yes. offseason, but they saw what we saw. Did you feel good when the Browns kicker came into the game last year? No, you never really felt safe, although I do think Greg Joseph got a bit of a bad rap. If you look at his numbers, they weren't that bad. But obviously, Dorsey didn't feel safe, and people are ragging on this kicker situation, like the fact that you're not supposed to draft a kicker. But um, this is how excited I am about Bill the Bill Belichick ball. does. Yeah, th- and he knows a thing or two. He took a punter this year. He took a kicker. The kicker he has now he drafted. Yeah, but what's he ever done? You're right. uh, no, You're but right. I, here's how excited I am about this Browns team, and this is so embarrassing. This, you know how, like, when you get your picks and you don't know these guys, everybody, I like, first of all, like, when your callers are call in, they're just like, they'll talk about a sixth round pick, like they've been following them at Baylor since whatever, sure. you know. But uh, I actually went on YouTube and watched the montage of uh, Austin Siebert kicking, like all of his kicks from his <laughs> career set to like rock music, you know, like he's tackling people. Wow. So it's just like, boom, shellac, lag. Bo-. I watched, there's like a hundred of them. I'm like, yeah, get it, kick it far. So that's how obsessed I am right now. Uh, by the way, we're giving the Browns an A for their draft. A. Why? Because that's what we're giving. So what we decided, a. prove us wrong. I, I'm like you. I actually looked at every website in the world does 
yeah. draft grades. That's what I was doing this morning. I, I was know. looking at most of them said we had a B plus A minus draft. I saw a lot of C's, uh, but oh, I really, really? I, I really don't care. And I, I and none of them were even mentioning the OBJ or the yeah. um, in that. As if that just happened. Olivier on its own. Vernon. Yeah, yeah we lost. We, we gave yeah. up a first. We gave up our first round yeah. pick, and it turned into um, Odell Beckham. Yeah. That's not too bad. The Browns are almost so good right now that these guys are going to have a tough time getting on the field. Yeah, it's a nice. Any, problem. Anybody that drafts. That's, I guess this is what the real teams do. Yeah. While the weekend came and went, Browns running back Duke Johnson is still a Cleveland Brown. Sorry, are bro. You surprised? No. Why would we give him up? I mean, I know he doesn't necessarily like it here, but this guy's talented as hell, and it's good to have this running back depth. And I'm sorry, dude, you're under contract. If you don't like how many touches you're getting, that stinks. And I agree that he should get more touches. But based on what we picked up this year, it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. So I understand the frustration. Well, let's remember, but you're under contract. He's going to play the first eight games. Kareem yeah. Hunt is suspended. Yep. So the Browns just can't give him up. You know what they were getting? They were being offered a fifth-round pick. No. For Duke Johnson. That's no, nothing. Of course I, that's not. Like, that's like a guy that's a long shot to make your team. And I'm Yeah. And I'm glad they didn't pressure that and, and give in to that pressure from Duke Johnson's team saying he wanted to go somewhere else and everything. Like, sorry, bro, you're under contract. We might need you. Running backs go down. You, uh, you're still a Cleveland Brown. Congratulations. Well, here, that's exactly what Freddie Kitchen said. Oh, good. Let's listen, listen to, to this. Duke Johnson's on this football team. Duke Johnson will have a vital role in this football team. And uh, Duke Johnson will help us win football games. Uh, so I don't, am I surprised that he's still here? No, not one bit. And I haven't wavered and never said anything different other than that. Well, Michael, he's going to have to come in. All right. He might even sit out some of training camp. Right. He's not happy because he feels like he's not going to be used. But he's going to have to get in here. He's under contract. And yeah. the NFL is set up where if you don't report and you're under contract, it costs you a lot of money, folks. So the Duke Johnson saga is not over yet. No. Speaking of veterans, Mike, did it bother you? Odell Beckham Jr. was at Coachella mm -hmm. and not at the Browns practice facility for voluntary offseason program. Um, I find that probably most of the people that go to Coachella bother me, if I had to guess, just based on a lot of <laughs> But most of the people I know who do it. No, it, it's, um, you, know, have, you haven't been? I, no, I haven't been. I'd very much prefer that he were here, but he's uh, not, and it is called a voluntary off-season program. It's not like these guys haven't been in the NFL for a bit. I would prefer that they were here connecting with each other and, and you know, actually getting to know each other. That would show us something, but... Um, they're not. They don't have to be here right now, and so I'll, I'll be mad if they're here when they're supposed. When they're not here, if they're supposed to be. Yeah. Here. First of all, I, I know this about um, OBJ, I, I, Chris Carter, who uh, former Buckeye is mm -hmm. pretty close to him. And if you listen to Chris, number one, OBJ is coming off an injury, and he expected to be 100 percent. Number two, he is going to be in shape, and number three, he is going to be committed when he finally comes here. This is a guy going into his sixth year, folks. Yeah. He's a wide receiver. See ball, catch ball. I, I hear the whole thing about being with your teammates. That's what training camp is for. Right. Don't get all caught up in the whole OTAs and this guy's not here. I love this stat. The last two defensive players of the year, mm -hmm. Khalil Mack and Aaron Donald, missed training camp. The whole training missed camp. training camp. The whole training And they were defensive players of the year. So let's just... Let's just sit back and see yes. how this plays out. The guy out. knows what he's doing. Remember when, like, towards the end when Joe Thomas would, he didn't have to go to anything if he didn't want to. And right. he would just, he would, you wouldn't, they wouldn't see him until the first game, not even preseason. He'd just, right. like, walk into the huddle. He's like, I'm Joe. Yeah. I'm Joe. <laughs> how you doing? That's how it worked, and he, he, he's earned that. Is our head coach concerned about OBJ? Listen. There's no problem with Odell not being here. Uh, I'd rather him be here. He's not here. It's voluntary. That's what the word voluntary means. He can decide to come or he can't. But under no circumstance am I going to say uh, that I'm pissed off at Odell for not being here. Uh, he'll be ready to play, and that's the, ultimately the only thing I want is for him to be ready to play when we start kicking off in September. And he will be, I promise you. Yeah, I, I promise you that too. Michael, how great to hear that, Coach plain speak everybody yep is that does. unbelievable he's not dancing that's around. not coach speak right there no. kids i don't uh, think he has that kind of guile or layer to him and that might hurt him in the long run in some ways you know because you do need a little bit of that bs and you need a little bit of that schmoozy kind of thing just to keep the everybody working together and stuff like that but it is right now it's refreshing as hell to hear somebody just street, shooting straight and by the way it's the first the first time he does have to be here is june 4th mm. uh that is the start of mini camp all right coming up are the Cavs still, the Cavs are still looking for a head coach? Yes, we still have a franchise. Uh, have you interviewed yet? Not yet. I have an update when we come back. Hey now. Wow, welcome back. Oh, kids, hi. 
Howdy. Welcome back to the Rizzo Show. Michael, do you realize um, our basketball team, the NBA team, we don't have a coach. Yeah, we're kind of in the market for one of those. Is anyone even talking about the Cavs right now? You and your friends? It's, you no, nobody's the Cavs? really, it's not coming up very often, That's which is kind of probably good for them after a season like that to fly under the radar where none, none of us are really paying attention, let them get some work done. All right, well, we're going to talk about them right now. We begin with former Grizzlies head coach, J.B. Bickerstaff, of course, his father, Bernie Bickerstaff, was a great coach. Mm -hmm. uh, currently a senior basketball advisor with the Cavs. 40 years old, and the Cavs have said that they want a guy for the long haul. I would expect them to hire somebody younger. Uh, there are some veteran guys out there, but I think the front runner right now is Bickerstaff in the clubhouse. Um, that's fine. I don't know enough about him. I know his record with Memphis was less than stellar, uh, and you know, but that doesn't you know you don't know what that means. Like Ty, uh, let's say for example, Larry Drew. He might not deserve the record that he had last year based on the talent he had I to work with. I thought he did a pretty do damn did. good job, he especially towards the end. He kept him. You know, here's he was he did exactly what he needed to do. Colin Sexton came in and he was uh, his his eyes were huge because it was the NBA and it's a big transition. And he calmed him down and he made Colin Sexton into like a look like a good draft pick by the end of the year. My new coach, I would lo I'd love Zion. I'd love yeah. Zion to be. Of course, that'd be coach. nice. You get Zion and I'll coach player the Cleveland coach. Cavaliers. Yeah. Uh, no, I wouldn't be player coach. I just wear those fancy suits though. I like those, Michael. Uh, let's take a look at some other coaching candidates. Alex Jensen yep. with the Utah Jazz. He's 42. He coached the Canton Charge uh -huh. in 2011. Nate Tibbetts, Trailblazers. He was assistant coach with the Cavaliers in 2011 before heading to Portland. And David Vanderpool, Portland Trailblazers. I would suspect the next Cavs coach comes from that group. It's good work by our, produce, uh, our producer, uh, Katie Rossborough, who did a good Put job. Put together. Well, I don't even know where she found video of those right. co uh, coaches. No. Assistant coaches in the NBA are hard to find video. I do like that Tibbetts and another one of those guys were head coaches for the Canton Charge. And I think that having that kind of experience would be nice. And they are obviously want to go younger. That's the NBA thing right now. So I think, yeah, I think you're probably right. It's probably going to be one of those cats. Well, Michael, it's great to see Frankie Lindor back Ooh. and raking for your Cleveland Indians. Don't tell anybody. I think the Indians are still playing right now. <laughs> Michael! Uh, Frankie Lindor over the weekend hit his 100th home run. He became the third youngest player in MLB history to reach that mark, joining mm, a couple of guys you may know, Alex Rodriguez and Cal Ripken Jr. Um, go ahead, say it. Enjoy him now. Folks, I don't know what's going to happen with Frankie, but I got to agree. Enjoy him now. Are we really worrying about 2021? Yeah, I'm not. Or 2022? Look, man, the Indians are winning their division right now. They're in the top 10 for their uh, playoff rankings in, in the power rankings for all the websites. Enjoy the damn season. I love the way everybody's going to look ahead two or three years. We know we don't have to be here I don't in two or it. three years. Right. That's true. No, I totally agree. And it is fun to watch. And But this year is another one of those confirmation years, even so far with Lindor, just how remarkable this, this kid is and yeah. how, how special he He's is. He's really getting locked in now. Don't forget, he missed spring training because of the injury. So he's going to get locked in. I think it's going to be a very special year for him. For hitters to pitchers, Mike, who do you think is winning the head-to-head -head battle for ace so far, Bauer or Kluber? Come on. What's up with, with Corey? What do you think's up with Corey Kluber? Well, I mean, you know, he looks like he's just not quite hitting the corners like he wants to. He's, he's putting stuff right over the plate, or he's putting stuff where pitchers can hit it. It just, he seems like he's lost, uh, he's missing some edge. He it, looks gotta be like a different pitcher. Well, he's also, Is this why we tried to shop him in the offseason? You also have to remember, and you know this, he, not this slow, but he does start slow, typically. You know, he has, if you look at his numbers in April, he's always higher, and then he, it goes down and down, and then unfortunately when we get to the playoffs, it goes back down, and it's even worse. Right. Like, because he doesn't pitch well typically in the postseason. But um, we got to give him some time. It's been, what's it, we have a small sample size yeah. we're drawing from right now. Yeah. Bauer is back on the mound, by the way, Tuesday night when the Tribe takes on the Marlins in Miami. Coming up, Michael, we're going to spin the wheel, kids. Don't go anywhere. Buckle up. Stay with us. Mike Polk Jr. shredding on the guitar, ladies and gentlemen. Just something I do. I love to entertain. Welcome back, everybody, to the Rizzo Show. It's one of our favorite segments right now. Let's all play together as we spin, spin the, the wheel. wheel. Here I it comes. We are not told what these. We know. Oh, the oh, monsters no. We're are talk in about the, the monsters. Well, they're in the second round of the Calder Cup playoffs. As everyone Michael. in Cleveland knows, we will face the uh, Toronto team, the, the Marlies. 
on Wednesday night. And you know what? They actually have a really nice following here. Yeah, I, that's I great. Heard, I heard some rumors about NHL looking into Cleveland. Really? I didn't know. You know, we're playing the Blue Jackets are tied with the uh, uh, Bruins right now. Mm. We're playing the Blue Jackets playoff awesome. games on our air on ESPN Cleveland. I am noticing some more heat on Twitter about hockey in general. Mm. And maybe it's becoming more popular amongst people. But it's one of those things where I never understand what they're talking about when they're, they're doing it. They're yelling at me. Oh, that's good. Here we go. Oh, spin, spin it. it. Yeah. You know what? Just spin it, guys. Just spin ahead. it whenever you want. We will adjust. Oh. Tiger! Who's that guy? Ah, Tiger Woods. Michael, Tiger Woods is going to play in Japan, and after winning the Masters, he is now the favorite to win the PGA Championship at Beth Page Black in May. Are you surprised Tiger is back and winning majors? I'm surprised that he's still, that he is getting that sort of recognition where they are saying that he's going to win. That they, I mean, I didn't Favorite think that was, in Vegas. I didn't think that was a fluke, but is that like draw, just name recognition? I, I think it is, and I think that they know a lot of people are going to place a lot of bets yeah, you're right. on Tiger Woods. All right, here we go. Next up. What do we got? I here see comes Russell Westbrook. Uh -huh. Michael. Uh, his Oklahoma Thunder bounced in the first round of the playoffs. He's a triple-double machine, yes. but they don't win. No. I mean, he had Paul George. Is he a little overrated? Yeah, I think so. I just saw an un I mean, he's amazing. He's an amazing point guard. He's so fun to watch. Uh, um, but, it, it, you know, if, if you do this this long and is, you're still getting stuck at the same place again and again like he has been, you got to start to look and say, what's the problem? What's the consistent thing through all this? And it's him. Is, does he not facilitate enough with his teammates? Is he not a good leader? We, we got, you got to ask these questions He's if angry. you can't make it pass. He's always If angry. he was in the East, he'd probably be in the championship game. <laughs> He's in the wheel. Yeah, tell me the Warriors are not going to win again. Yeah. The kid, do you watch the Derby? I do, but I, I, again, I don't know what's going on, but I watch it because I think it's just fun. It's coming up May 4th. One of my favorite uh, horses this year is Roadster, who is trained by none other than Bob Baffert. Do you Ooh, know who Bob Baffert is? No. Okay, he's like the most famous trainer going know right now. Do you bet on the Derby? I will, like a fun, just a fun bet. I'll pick the, like I, a name that I like. Did you ever go? No, I've never oh, been. Oh, you would love it. Yeah. I've, been, I've been there both ways. I was drunk in college on the infield, mm -hmm. and then I went to the Millionaire's Row where the ladies wear the hats one year and did a TV piece. It's a lot of fun. Which was more fun, be honest. Drunk Pro in the probably infield. Probably the infield. Absolutely. All right, time for one last spin. It was very expensive on the other end of the Yeah, road. no thanks. James Holzauer. Mike, do you even know who he is? No. He's oh, yeah, the that's Jeopardy the Jeopardy guy. Di right. And he's crushing it. Crushing it over a million dollars. You know what I love? He's a sp professional sports yes, gambler. Yes, he is. Well, give that up, dude, because you just made over a million dollars at Jeopardy. Do you think he could beat Ken Jennings, the all-time great, the Babe Ruth? It looks like it. And you know what I like about this dude, too, is that he's actually like a likable dude. Wouldn't you expect him to be just a nightmare? But can anybody that smart? Yeah. You're just like, oh, come right. on. Like, he, he said that he studied for uh, subjects that he wasn't familiar with by going to the children's section of the library. Because if you just learn the basics, you're, apparently you're you know good what to Jeopardy. Go. Speaking of winning, Michael, you can win big. MGM Northfield Park, we love that place. Let's see what's happening this week. There's a new show in town, Northeast Ohio, and we brought the spirit of Las Vegas with us. Win $1 million every Saturday and Sunday starting May 11th. Earn entries all month long beginning May 5th for your chance to win. Five winners will be drawn every hour from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. to play the big win game to win up to $1 million. Introducing TAP at MGM Northfield Park. Enjoy comfort food and pub classics. Catch your favorite team on one of over 50 high-definition televisions while surrounded with Ohio sports memorabilia. Don't miss all of your favorite entertainers at the new center stage. Check out Country Music Award winner Billy Currington Thursday, May 2nd. And take a trip down memory lane with the Righteous Brothers on Sunday, May 5th. Tickets available at the box office or Ticketmaster.com. Take a Vegas vacation without leaving the state. MGM Northfield Park. Las Vegas is here. Stay tuned for our good friends, Big Chuck and Lil John, <laughs> coming up next. Love now, you, I know, Chuck. I, I know the whole draft thing was weird for us because, you know, right now, Brown stands like, what? What's our grade? What's it? Folks, yeah. we're good enough now where the draft doesn't matter as much as it used to. Right. You know what change? You got your franchise quarterback. Yes, you do. So, it, by the way, get used to this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the Browns are going to win 11 games like everybody says they are, but I know they're not going to win three. 
Okay, and they're going to be they're going to be good this year. And it is nice to have a draft be an afterthought, and not the corner piece of our season. Right? Really, isn't right. that nice? Like we, this, absolutely. This is all we would have been talking about for so long. All right, yep. your plugs. Mike. Tuesday oh, nights okay. at Pickwick and Frolic, I do a variety of show. It's a lot of fun stuff, music and mayhem and whatnot. Come and join us. Shredding guitar, shredding that you hardcore. hear all the time. Yep. It's actually a really fun show, and the Larrys is so great. Michael, thank you, and everybody else, thank you for me. It's good to be alive. It's swell. Good night, Good night. everybody. We found our kicker.